is reaction mechanism. And this is definitely the topic that captivates me about kinetics and why I love kinetics so much is um, the way that kinetics provides the information that is necessary to determine a reaction mechanism. Chemical reactions occur by a series of steps known as the reaction mechanism. A balanced equation does not tell us how reactants become products. It's kinetics that helps us determine these steps. So if we look at an overall balanced equation here, nitrogen dioxide reacting with carbon monoxide to give us nitrogen monoxide and carbon dioxide, we would think that, okay, these two things collide with one another, bonds get broken, and new product bonds get formed. But in reality, this does not happen in just one step. And majority of chemical reactions do not occur in just one step. There are numerous steps involved getting the reactants to products. Okay, so for this reaction, this is the reaction mechanism. This is the rate law for the overall balanced equation. Okay, so once again, what is the overall balanced equation? This is the overall balanced equation. It occurs in two steps. First, a couple of nitrogen dioxides will collide with one another and they will form nitrogen trioxide and nitrogen monoxide. And then the nitrogen trioxide will react with carbon monoxide to form nitrogen dioxide and carbon dioxide. Okay, so this is a two-step reaction mechanism. You will never be asked to write a reaction mechanism. You might be asked to fill in a couple of blanks and you're going to be asked to evaluate reaction mechanisms. But reaction mechanisms take years to write, to figure out, a lot of trial and error. And the number one thing you've got to have is you've got to have a rate law. Now, this rate law for the overall balanced equation was, ex was determined experimentally. And what this rate law tells us is that nitrogen dioxide is a second order reactant. Now, what about the other reactant in the balanced equation? The other reactant is carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide. Does it appear in the overall rate law? It's not here. So that tells us that carbon monoxide is what? Carbon monoxide is a zero order reactant because it does not appear in the rate law. And that means that as well, the concentration of carbon monoxide has absolutely no effect on the rate of the reaction. Okay, so this is a two step mechanism. And what we find in this mechanism is that we make this nitrogen trioxide in the first step of the mechanism, and then the nitrogen trioxide is um, consumed in the second set step of the reaction mechanism. So we have a special name for nitrogen trioxide. We call nitrogen trioxide an intermediate. And that means that it has been produced and consumed within the mechanism 
and it does not appear in the overall balanced equation. Now, the next thing we need to talk about in terms of mechanisms is something called molecularity. So each of the two reactions in our example is called an elementary step. So it's an elementary step of the mechanism. And the rate law, and this is in quotations, you'll see why, can be written from that elementary step's molecularity. And what molecularity does is it describes the number of species that must collide to produce that elementary step reaction. This mechanism has two steps. Okay, elementary step one, elementary step two. And based on molecularity, we can write the rate law, in quotation marks, the rate law for each of these steps. Now, how would we go about doing that? Okay, so this can get kind of confusing because I'm going to ask you to write a rate law, in quotation marks, um, that is not based on experimental data, but is based instead on molecularity, in terms of how many of each component has to collide. So, in a unimolecular step, we have some reactant decomposing into products, and because we have only one thing and it doesn't have to collide with anything else, we can write our rate law for this step, this kind of step, as rate equals k times just a to the first power. Unimolecular, one molecule. Now, we can also have bimolecular elementary steps where two molecules collide to form products. So what are, what are some examples? How could this be? Well, we could have two identical, two identical reactants colliding with each other, forming products, and the rate law is written with these two colliding as A to the second. Okay, because we've got two of them colliding. We might also see this step as being just simply two A's. In your mind, you have to think that that's an A plus an A. An A and an A colliding together, and again, A to the second. Okay, a second order, because two things are colliding. Keeping in mind, don't get confused. This is the way we write rate laws for steps of a mechanism. How else could this thing look? Well, we could have two different things colliding. We could have A colliding with B, forming products, and in this case, the rate law for this elementary step would be rate equals K, A to the first, B to the first. We have termolecular steps. They are very rare, where three things have to collide. Okay, it's the, in terms of probability, it doesn't happen very much. Okay, and we can have various, uh, ver we can have lots of variations on this thing. So we could have a couple of A's and a B colliding, which would give us an A squared B. We could have an A plus two B's colliding. That would give us an A, B squared. We could get three different things colliding. A plus B plus C all colliding together at the same time. Um, and in that case, we would have rate equals K times A times B times C. Okay, so we can write rate laws based on molecularity of elementary steps of reaction mechanisms. So let's go back and in your own...
own mind, what would the rate laws look like for each of these elementary steps? Well, this would be a rate equals k times NO2 to the second power, and this would be rate equals k times NO3 to the first times CO to the first. Okay, that's what our two rate laws for these elementary steps would look like. So now we're ready to wrap this thing up. So reaction mechanisms must satisfy two requirements before they are accepted in the scientific community. The sum of the elementary steps must give the overall balanced equation. So we're going to go back in a minute to our, our um, mechanism and make sure that it is going to give us our overall balanced equation. But the key here and why this has everything to do with kinetics is that it must agree with the experimentally derived rate law. So the two have to coincide in order for a proposed reaction mechanism to be ex in, um, accepted. Okay, so last but not least, a reaction is only as fast as its slowest step, also known as its rate determining step. So we can ask the question of the mechanism. What is the rate determining step of the mechanism? What is the slow step of this mechanism? All right, so let's go back and let's check this first. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sum this thing up. Okay, so these are two elementary steps, and I'm going to sum it up. And I'm going to do that by, I'm going to put all of my reactants, and this should be reminding you a lot of Hess's law, is what it should be doing. Okay, here are my reactants, everything from this side. my product side. Let's cancel out things that appear on both sides. So, NO3, NO3. That's our intermediate. It was produced and consumed within the mechanism. What else can I get rid of? I can get rid of an NO2 with another NO2. And so, that leaves me with NO2 plus CO gives me nitrogen monoxide plus carbon dioxide, is that my overall balanced equation? Oh, look at that. Why, yes, it is. Okay, so I have satisfied the first requirement of the mechanism. Okay, so this mechanism follows the first requirement. Now the second requirement is that the slow step of the mechanism matches the experimentally derived rate law. This is the rate law that has been determined experimentally. What we can do now is we can say, well, if that's the rate law, we can determine which of these 
two steps is the rate determining step. Because the rate law of the rate determining step matches the experimentally derived rate law. There's going to be one little, one little extra added attraction, but we're not going to do that right this second. So if I look at these two based on molecularity, do either of these two match the experimentally derived rate law? Why, yes, it does. Elementary step one. So elementary step one, this is the rate determining step. And what that tells us then overall, you guys, is why is this a zero order reactant? Because it is not involved in the rate determining step. The slow step is getting these two things to collide in the correct orientation. Once they do and they form the nitrogen trioxide, this next step goes very, very, very rapidly. And so, this zero order reactant does not appear in the experimentally derived rate law because this step does not determine the rate of the reaction. This step determines the rate of the reaction.